Hi, everyone. It's Capital Report with Representative Tom Rukavina. I'm Andrew Wittenberg. Thanks for the time, and thank you for joining us as well. Andrew, thanks for having me. You know, we are at the... Better make sure my cell phone's turned on. <laughs> well, that's there right. We, we don't want a little... Yeah. Unless, unless somebody important is going to call yeah, in the middle okay. of the show, Could then we be, might want to take the call. Either the president or the governor. That's right. Call. Well, okay. I, if the governor calls, you know... Yes, I'll, I'll respond. Okay, fair in enough. kind, as usual. <laughs> Go ahead. We are just past the midway point of the session. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I was just asking a couple of other members this, too. I mean, you've been in the legislature a while. Does it feel like a lot of these big things have gotten done early in the session, bonding work on the budget, you know, another jobs bill, or does it feel like, you know, it's kind of a typical session that way? Well, it's, it's not a typical session in the sense that uh, uh, we normally cut, cut, cut. Yeah. But it is, to me, a typical session in what uh, we're getting done. I'm glad that the bonding bill got done. Uh, uh, typically, uh, it would have gotten done later than it did. Uh, I don't know if the strategy was uh, that particularly... Uh, uh, worked that particularly well in, in the fact that uh, the overwhelming majority of the uh, projects that got vetoed by the governor were DFL projects. So in that regard, maybe we should have held out a little bit, negotiated a little bit better, because I don't think it was fair. But, uh, you know, as far as the pace of the session goes, uh, to me it's typical. It's just sad that we have a governor that really uh, doesn't care about this state as much as he does about his political future and that uh, therefore we have had no compromise really, Andrew, and uh, it's been nothing but cuts around here. It does seem like it's kind of this dance that takes place here where he says, well, I'd love to meet and talk with you, but then you meet and talk with him and the doors close and it's not really ever quite clear what it is that he really wants to work on in the meantime. I mean, it just kind of seems like it's kind of not Well, much. I've served under Governor Perpich, Governor Carlson, Governor Ventura, now Governor uh, Palente, and uh, we've never had a governor that uh, really would take his ball and go home, so to speak, uh, like that spoiled kid on the playground, uh, like we've had with this governor. And frankly, last year uh, at the beginning of the budget cycle, I thought that we should have taken him on and that we should have pushed the issue and that we should have uh, uh, went all the way to a government shutdown because I know this guy. I've been working with him and working against him since uh, 19, I think it was 94 when he came in. Uh, maybe it was 92, but in any event, uh, when he got elected, but in any event, I've worked with him all those uh, years, and I knew that uh, he was going to do the things that he's doing, because uh, it's, uh, like I said, uh, Governor Polanyi thinks the three branches of government are I, me, and my, and not mm -hmm. the legislature the governor, the executive branch, and the uh, judicial branch. So I would have taken him on more, but uh, you know I'm not in leadership, and that's the way things go. And now we're facing uh, this unallotment mess, which we should probably talk a little bit about too, because uh, if the courts do rule in our favor, uh, we're going to have to come back in to this session. Uh, rumor has it we're going to be taking a little break next week because we're kind of hanging around waiting to see what the feds do as far as uh, uh, money uh, for balancing our budget and the uh, health care part of our budget, the uh, uh, health omnibus bill. So, uh, but uh, as we take that break, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of concerned about the whole direction of what's happening in the state of Minnesota. Sure, I mean, with regard to the unlawment, obviously the legislature sent the governor budget bills last year. He, he signed a lot of them, but it's the tax bill, the bill that would have paid right. for it, that he vetoed. It threw then this into a case of where the governor thought he could use his powers to unlock. And I guess the question really now is, is will the courts come in and say those were unconstitutional and throw them out? I mean, you have a sense of this going Well, on? you know, if they rule in our favor, we're going to have to be back in here after this break and looking at either a compromise where he does sign some uh, revenue increases or we're going to be looking at another uh, $2.7 billion or so maybe to on a lot. So it's frightening the impacts on this state and on some vulnerable people in this state and on our educational system are great. And uh, Andrew, I don't know uh, what's going to happen, but uh, either way, I think uh, whether the courts rule against us on an allotment or for us, uh, it's not a good harbinger for things to come. That, I mean, really, the base we're working with is it's, it's the economy's bad, but the budget is just as bad as well. And so there's a lot of not good choices remain, unless you yes. want to just go back there and tackle them from a balanced point of view. Well, again, you were hit the nail on the head when you said the governor signed all the spending bills, uh, you know, and then just vetoed the tax bill. And that was part of our solution was 
cut a third, raise a third, have the government bail us, the federal government bail us out on a third. And uh, he didn't keep that one part of the uh, balanced approach. All right, we're out of time for this show. We're going to talk on some other topics, including higher education, which is an area that you obviously work closely with in, uh, as a chair of that committee. But thanks for now for joining us on Capital Report. I'm Andrew Wittenberg.